Hi, everyone. I'm Captain Laura, and we're so excited that you're joining us today for the launch of our new series, Travel Like a Pro. For First of all, we're going to be hosting a whole series of free, incredible interviews with professionals in the industry who will be sharing with you travel tips, tricks, and hacks to make your flying and travel a better experience. We're gifting you with this knowledge and insight to help empower you so that you can travel safely, comfortably, and with ease. So right now, I want you to also go to captainlaura.com backslash checklist and download your free must knows before your next trips. And let us know if you would love to access and download a detailed series created by us that teaches you how to save money, how to travel healthily, be best prepared, ease your fears, and travel like a pro. We want you to ask questions. We're going to have you, we ask that you save them until after the end of the interview, because uh, today we have some exciting things to share with you. So let's get the engine started. So for those of you who don't already know me, I'm currently an airline captain for a major US carrier. I fly the Boeing 767, 757, 737, and Airbus A320. Prior to that, I was a captain on a Lockheed L188, which is a P3, and also a Convair 580, doing Navy contract flying, international cargo flying, and charters. I also flew aerobatics and I flew different airplanes like a Kristen Eagle, Pitts S2B, Decathlon, and was an air show director for an air show performer. I also was a flight instructor. I taught all different levels of flying and I got a Bachelor of Science degree from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Aeronautical Sciences with a minor in dispatch. Before that, as a teen, I worked uh, three different jobs to pay for my flying lessons. I started when I was 15, soloed on my 16th birthday, and then earned my license uh, to be a private pilot when I was 17 years old. So I'm also a mother of two amazing children, a wife to an aeronautical engineer and military man. I had also been um, accepted to the Air Force Academy. Um, and also, I've, I'm an author of two books, Remove Before Flight, which is for all air travelers, and also Lost and Found, which we hope to make a series or movie out of one of these days. I also do guest speaking and am a media spokesperson. But today, we have the superstar with us. I'm so honored to be joined by Scott Cardvet. He is an amazing person with a huge list of accomplishments. Scott served in the Navy for over 21 years and was a superstar fighter pilot and rose to the elite status of being a Navy Blue Angels pilot. So we're excited. We're going to hear more about that when Scott is talking with us. He also did five combat tours and commanded several combat units and received a bronze star for his leadership skills. Scott is now currently flying on the Patriots Formation Precision Jet Team, and he is also an instructor pilot for a major US airline teaching the other airline pilots. So Scott believes in creating a culture of excellence with impact leadership. And you can also reach him at scott.cartvet, we'll put that online, .com. So it's such an honor, Scott, to have you here with us today because you know we've been friends since last year when we met, when we were collaborating together for the awesome event, the San Francisco Fleet Week, where you had coordinated everything and I was a co-host for Cron Channel 4 News. Welcome, Scott. Um, <laughs> what a terrific opportunity to be here with you, Laura, and have Thank the opportunity you. to be on your inaugural podcast. Uh, as you mentioned, I do have a little bit of experience uh, traveling uh, I've had the opportunity to go to 54 countries, all 50 states, six of the seven continents. So uh, I've picked up a thing or two, and I hope to share that with the folks that are listening today. Absolutely. And that's what we're going to roll into. So if you have some travel tips and tricks to share with everybody right now, they would love to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. So as you mentioned, uh, I wasn't 
attuned to traveling or into aviation <laughs> quite like you were, uh, as you had the passion for it from a very young age. My story is a little bit different. Uh, I was actually an accountant out of Pepperdine University. I saw the movie Top Gun too many times and decided I absolutely want to do that. And that's when my travel life exploded. As you mentioned, I had the opportunity to fly with the Blues and we traveled uh, 36 weekends a year. So we became very adept at traveling. Uh, I would say that honestly, the most important thing to me traveling, at least domestically, is maintaining uh, on the normal schedule that I keep in Colorado, which is mountain time, uh, which has to deal with the circadian rhythms. Uh, mm -hmm. So I would uh, argue that the tactical employment of caffeine is probably the most important. <laughs> uh, so, and we use that term in the military a lot. Uh, you don't want to over caffeinate, but if you need the caffeine, then absolutely tactically employ that, have a cup of coffee, <laughs> uh, get a caffeinated beverage, uh, so that you can stay alert when you need to be alert, but be, ca be cautious as it gets close to bedtime or prepping for bedtime. Uh, you want to back off in plenty of time to be able to get a restful night's sleep. That's probably yeah. the most important thing. And I'm sure you've experienced that as well. Oh uh, yeah. Um, Strate and then the other <laughs> strategic use of caffeine. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh -huh. uh, and then the other one, which is a little known secret uh, for those of us that travel on red eyes uh, and we find ourselves going to bed at seven or 8 a.m. trying to get eight hours of sleep, which is uh, when we flip our clocks uh, 180 degrees out, uh, the light coming into the room can really be destructive to a good sound night's sleep. So yeah. uh, what I do is I take those, uh, the coat hangers that have the clips on them uh, to hang your pants. Uh, yeah. And I will bring the drapes together and use those as kind of alligator clips. So, so you don't get that seam of light that will come through and keep you wide awake. Uh, that's kind of a great, great idea. travel tip. Uh, and then I have just recently started wearing the mask. I felt a little bit silly initially because I didn't understand the importance of it, but sleeping with a mask on will definitely block the light out uh, and allow you to get as much restful sleep as possible. Do you do any of those at all? I do all of those. <laughs> oh, do you I also really? blast out the white noise because, you know, the other thing I do is with blasting out the white noise, it just blocks out any residual uh, sounds that come in. And then also I'll take the towel and roll it up and put it underneath uh, where the door is yeah. uh, because th there always seems to be like a half inch or even sometimes as much as an inch of space between the door and the floor. So everybody in the hallway, if they're opening, closing the doors, and as you know, maids and things like that in the mornings when we just rolled in from an all-nighter. So, yeah. Well, so that's another point, right? The, probably the number one thing you can do is put the do not disturb sign yes. on the door uh, mm -hmm. because who knows who will come by and knock. And it just kind of lets everybody know that you're sleeping. Uh, it's interesting that you mentioned the white noise because I too am a big fan of the white noise. And I learned that uh, from my mom and dad. We grew up uh, out in the country, out in Eastern San Diego, and there were sheep and cows and coyotes, and they would keep us <laughs> awake as kids. Uh, so I have an app on my phone called White Noise, and mm -hmm. I'll actually place it kind of near the door, and it almost puts up a screen of noise uh, that prevents that other noise coming through. Or if your room happens to be near a highway or major intersection and the window yeah. faces that intersection, then I'll put it over by uh, the inner, the window and it'll block that. It's almost like a, a wall of noise that prevents intermittent noise that'll wake you up come, coming through. So definitely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. All good tips. How about <laughs> nutritionally? What, are you, what yeah. are you recommending nutritionally? Well, you know me. I'm. <laughs> everyone's like, do you have bricks in these suitcases you know that the the guys that or the, or the the people that do the you know pick us up for the transportation but i am i'm always a big fan of you know alkaline water so i always stay super hydrated as best as i can although it's a challenge with trying to use the lavatory sometimes of course when you're in from the cockpit as you know right and um but always for everybody 
it's so crucial that you stay hydrated when you travel because the the humidity on most of the jets is only about what is it four percent or so right. so you want to just really really hydrate as best as you can and try to eat as you know as best you know nutritional foods as we can to keep our energy level up well yeah that's a great point you see a lot of passengers that are drinking sodas coffee yeah. Uh, cause they're trying to stay awake in or I, alcohol <laughs> to try yeah, to that, ease your that, fears. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. Uh -huh. Uh, and so I'll tell people kind of alternate with the water and anytime you see a flight attendant coming through the cabin and they have the tray of waters that they're handing out or maybe orange juice, I take one every single time when I'm a passenger just to make sure I'm hydrating. Uh, cause as you mentioned, I think the humidity level is about 4% in most of the airplanes. Yeah. Uh, and you'll notice it that your skin gets so dry. So uh, I always have a uh, some lotion in my bag to keep my hands and arms uh, yeah. well lubricated because uh, there's dehydration just makes you feel tired right. uh, and can zap the energy from you. And and also, like you said, lubrication, which they were all a fan of, but eyes and nose, nasal also. Um, yep. There's different moisturizers you can use that also helps you feel feel good. And other immune boosting tips, especially in this environment that we're in? Yeah, I'm a big fan of vitamin C and uh, D3 vitamins that I take as regularly as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. To tell you the truth, in this environment with the masks, mm -hmm. um, I am generally the first one in my family to catch a cold because of all the traveling that we do in the environment that we operate in. Uh, and I have not had, knock on wood, the sniffles uh, since February, because we've been wearing masks. Uh, yeah. And I really think that it not only protects anybody from uh, something that I may be putting out through my uh, breath, but certainly protects me from those that could be carrying something, whether it's uh, something as dangerous as COVID or something uh, as natural <laughs> as a common cold. Uh, right. So I'm actually, I, I'm a, I'm, I'm a big fan of the masks because, and I know that you are as well, right? Uh, because I want everybody I'm around to feel safe around me, uh, and I want to be protected from anything that they may uh, they may not even know they're carrying. So I think it's really critical. And then washing your hands. Let's talk about washing the hands yeah. in the airport and on the plane. Mm -hmm. um, how important is that? Well, you know, here's a funny story. So when I was a, a new pilot at the major airline, um, I would fly sometimes with with other pilots that would just wipe down every single, like they, 15 minutes worth of wiping every switch and every button, you know, the armrests, the control yokes and everything, wipe right. everything down on the plane. I thought, oh my goodness, well, it's going to be a long trip or something. Well, they were correct because in that first year, I probably had, I don't know, I was probably sick four different times in year one because you're just exposed to more things. So the key is, and what I wrote about in the book too, is always boost your immune system, take things like airborne or Zycam, um, you know, three or four days ahead of time before you travel, take it, you know, three to four times a day and all during your trip also. But like you said, wash your hands, keep the antibacterial gels with you, have masks on now. And now the jets are so super clean. I mean, you know, you, you can tell us about what they're doing too. Yeah, before we do that though, uh, let your listeners know about Zycam. I know what it is and I'm actually a big fan of it as well. I am, uh, yeah. In the tablet, so uh, let them know what that is. So uh, it's so Airborne and Zycam, they're, they're kind of a lot the same, but um, they have all of those things that Scott just mentioned, the, the vitamin C, the echinacea, the zinc, uh, all the things that help boost your immune system to fight off anything that might come your way in any environment, you know, that's that, you know, you're touching different things and also don't touch orifices. <laughs> right. So as much as you might want to, you know, do this sometimes or something, you know, we have five different areas of contact that way. So yeah, that's, um, you know, I would tell you, uh, with the Zycam, I don't take it preventatively, uh, necessarily before I go, uh, and get on a, uh, flight. But as soon as I start to get maybe a little tickle uh, or a little post-nasal drip, then I'm right on the Zycam, the disp uh, disposable tablets, uh -huh. uh, and, and you, can, uh, you can almost taste the zinc. But I have found you can uh, uh, kind of do the Heisman to a, 
a cold <laughs> with the Zycam pretty fast. Exactly. Um, so you had asked uh, very appropriately during these challenging times about the cleanliness of the airplanes. And I get asked that, I'm sure, as you do uh, by neighbors, because uh, as soon as they find out that you fly for an airline, uh, first they let you know if you've ever <laughs> lost a bag, uh, and then they'll yeah. let you know. <laughs> normally a negative experience, uh, but these days they ask about the cleanliness and do I feel safe on an airplane? And I tell them the same thing that you just said, which is our airplanes, our terminals, our jet bridges have never been cleaner. Um, and it's important to emphasize not only the cleaning in between flights. So as a crew, as a uh, flight comes in, let's say from San Francisco to Denver, as they unload, we have a full cleaning crew that goes in, miss the planes, uh, because you need that contact moisture on the surfaces in the event that there's any uh, virus that has shedded onto the surface. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the HEPA filters, and this is a, a, a really great travel tip too. So the HEPA filters replace the air in most airplanes. 100% of the air is cycled every three minutes, which is quite, quite amazing. But yes. you, if you take the overhead uh, blowers that people use, you know, most people will put them on their face, uh, which is great if you're warm. I actually put it where it blows about that far off of my face. And I use that just like we did the white noise to put up a shield. I use yeah. that airflow, which is that clean HEPA filter air blowing down in front of my face to keep that fully clear in addition to wearing the mask. I mean, uh, yeah. it, it's safe. Uh, I, I'm very confident uh, in the safety and health measures that all of the airlines have taken uh, for the benefit of the passengers. And I think, you know, I just saw a study that came out that said it was like 0.03% chance now right. of getting, getting COVID on a flight. So 0.03%. <laughs> so, yeah. So I wanted to ask you, I mean, is there anything other tips and tips and tricks you'd like to share, Scott? Because I want to ask you about the Blue Angels too, of course, you know. Well, yeah. So uh, I, I tell you that with this, why don't you ask about the Blues? <laughs> and then I will try to uh, tell you about a trip and, and maybe some of the things that we did to stay healthy while we were traveling, how we packed uh, well, for that's, our that's, four or let's five roll day into trips. That. So, so yeah, because absolutely. Since you guys were traveling so much all the time um, with the Blue Angels and you were you know, at all the air shows too and doing everything that you were doing, how did you stay strong and healthy during all of that? There's Scott. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, traveling 36 weekends a year, uh, as you can tell by the photo that's on the screen, there's not a whole lot of luggage and storage space in an F-18. Yeah. Although we do have our <laughs> C-130 Fat Albert, we actually try to limit what we take. Uh, so there's always, uh, if we're doing three shows, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, there's a clean shirt for each show because we're not doing laundry. Generally, because of the uh, incredible workout that each 45 minute performance is, which yeah. I would consider to be a high intensity uh, in environment. Uh, we bring three flight suits. So you can tell that the, it really starts to fill the bag up. And then every Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, there's a social event. Sometimes you have to have a sport yeah. coat. So um, you have to bring a lot in a very small space. Uh, and inevitably, I, I think I, I always traveled with a small steamer uh, mm. so that I could steam my own clothes out. And that takes a little bit of room, uh, but it prevents any of the iron issues that you may find in a hotel oh, room, right? Where, yes. where somebody's ironed something that had polyester, so now there's burnt plastic <laughs> on the iron. Uh, yeah. So I have this uh, small steamer. Uh, that I carry with me in my bag, and it can turn a sport coat into unwrinkled within minutes. Uh, and so whether it's flight suit, sport coat, dress shirt, etc. cetera, but uh, it takes a little bit of room. You can get them on uh, uh, any online store. Uh, but that was a really great uh, travel tip that I used. Uh, and then rolling the clothes. I don't know if you're a, a roller, uh, <laughs> but if you're not, if you roll up, uh, let's say your uh, undergarments, your socks can go inside of the shoes because mm -hmm. I find that uh, I, I I can't just bring one pair of shoes. Uh, mm -hmm. And for those that are listening, if you ever wonder why, you can always spot an airline pilot at a hotel because they're always in running shoes. 
uh, <laughs> jeans and a shirt because they, they don't want to. They, yeah, they, well, they don't want to pack any more than one pair of shoes, but they know they want to work out. So they go to dinner in running shoes. And I'm just not that kind of guy. So I've always got my dress shoes. I've got my uniform shoes. I've got my running shoes. Uh, and so it kind of depends on the environment I'm flying into. But I'm also a big fan of rolling up and ensuring that uh, I don't have any void or empty space uh, inside the uh, my suitcase. So much so that even the steamer, I would take the steamer and put socks inside of that uh-huh. because that's where the water goes uh, to help provide that space. So just yeah. a couple of, uh, and I still do all of those things. I learned all those tricks when I was flying with the blues, uh, but okay. still apply it, fly with the Patriots and any traveling that I do right now. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you for that, Scott. Cause I, I did that to you one time you're in the, the, the hotel and it had some sort of rusty water in the iron. And so you put it on your uniform shirt and you have like orange spots all yeah, over. Yeah, absolutely. Shirt. Yeah. Yeah. So. And so sometimes if I have to use the iron on something, I'll get a wet towel, yes. uh, put that on the ironing board, turn the iron on as hot as I can and test it on the towels before I put it on in my clothes. Right. That's kind of another great opportunity to make sure you're not ruining anything of yours. Yeah, that's great. Great idea. So um, we let's see. So now you're flying also for the Patriots jet team, precision jet team, which is so fabulous. I got to see you fly last year too at Fleet Week. And we'll see you again soon when we're resuming all of our air shows. So that takes a lot of leadership and skill and professionalism with uh, all, you know, all these things that you're doing and creating. So can you tell us about that? Sure. Yeah. So uh, I'm a big fan of saying yes, uh, <laughs> and that because I find that it opens a lot of doors. So I was asked as a former Blue Angel to lead uh, the air demonstration team for United Airlines. And while we were at Fleet Week, which is sponsored by United Airlines as the presenting sponsor, I saw the Patriots flying. And one of the pilots, the number six pilot for the Patriots, uh, was on the Blue Angels with me. And I mm-hmm. happened to bump into him. And he said, hey, Scott, we're looking for a guy. Uh, Are you interested uh, in flying for the team? And I had not flown a fighter in five years. And I said, well, yes, because that's kind of my (laughs) go-to answer. And Uh two weeks later, I'm in Northern California doing loops to music uh, in an L-39. And uh, as soon as we landed, they said, hey, we'd like you to be the number five pilot for the team. And it's all volunteer. It's the only way that it can work for a civilian uh, jet organization. But uh, boy, it is such a shot of life every single time we go and fly uh, in front of huge crowds, uh, plus just the adrenaline rush to have mm-hmm. the opportunity to go out uh, and and fly for uh, crowds again. is ju- It's amazing. Uh, and you saw there, I saw one of the pictures that you put up, the opportunity to go speak. Uh, I got to go speak for the Golden Gate Club where they host sailors and Marines who were there for Fleet Week. And I had the opportunity uh, uh, to go talk to sailors and Marines, share my experiences in the military, some of the philosophies uh, that have carried me through my life uh, and, and have some camaraderie and fellowship with those folks, mm-hmm. uh, which is another wonderful opportunity of, of traveling and doing the Patriot uh, jet team shows and that's wonderful. Yeah, and we cannot wait to get back to the air shows. So Isn't that everybody, a fact? come on, let's go. <laughs> I and know. I want to I'm going to flash my uh my method 7s. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, good. this is method 7 glasses that uh, method 7 sponsors the Patriots jet team. So, those of you that want soothing, relaxed eyes, Method sevens. So you can order them online anyways. That's my own little promo because I love them so much. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. And, you know, yeah. it's really great. Uh, I would say that's a travel tip too because uh, yeah. I, 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 Method 7 does sponsor the team. And I tell people, I, I don't push Method 7 because they're sponsors. I, I got I to know I well, them. <laughs> well, I got to know Method 7 because they are sponsors. But yeah. those glasses, uh, yeah. they use kind of a blue crystal that uh, eases and comforts the eyes. Yeah. Uh, and as you saw when uh, we did Flea Week a couple of years ago, uh, boy, are they a comfortable, incredible pair of glasses. Um, They're amazing. 
Yeah, I totally agree. I appreciate you making that plug. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I because I love them. My my eyes just go ah oh, whenever I, I announce I, I put them on. So also, Scott, you're an instructor pilot with the airline, and so you teach the us the airline pilots out there. And so, if you can just talk talk a little bit about the excellent safety record that the airlines have had, and how the airlines have been able to maintain that throughout, it's been gosh at least twenty years. Yeah, so uh, I work at the largest global training center in the world. We have over 40 flight simulators. And this is something that most travelers don't know. They expect yeah. their pilots to be proficient, to be safe, to be professional, uh, certainly caring and taking care of the passengers. And so every pilot uh, has to go through training every nine months, two days of training. And so we bring a crew of pilots out and we run them through the most horrendous scenarios of emergencies um, so that in the event that even a tenth of what we put them through happened in an actual airplane, they would be able to handle it uh, with precision, excellence, uh, and most certainly safety um, because that is the most paramount thing that we do uh, and we take it very seriously i take it as seriously as an instructor and the pilots that come through that we have an opportunity to train and kind of put through the ringer uh, i know that they take it exceptionally serious too uh, but it's also really important to understand that the uh, redundant systems in our airplanes uh, in the yeah. planes that we are flying uh, today are incredible machines. Mm -hmm. um, and so you have the man, you have the machine, and you have the environment. Uh, and we trained all of those. We trained the uh, machine failures, we trained environmental conditions that could cause challenges, uh, whether that be thunderstorms, thunderstorms, microbursts, crosswinds. Uh, but we also spend a tremendous amount of time training to the person, which is the human factors aspect. Uh, and how do we take people from different parts of the country who have never flown together, put them in an airplane in an uninhabitable environment up at, you know, 25, 30, 40,000 feet uh, and safely move hundreds of people from point A to point B? Uh, and that's where the human factors really come in, which is the crew resource management piece. Mm hmm. And that's so important. It's, I mean, it's critical because I think we learned back in the seventies, you know, when, when you see kind of, it's like surgeons too, where, you know, it used to be kind of my way or the highway, but now it's really all using all your resources to make the best decisions for the safest outcomes. And so being able to work together in, in the simulators, in an environment where you have the instructors, you're, but you're working together and you have all of these different emergencies so that it, again, it, it reviews our systems knowledge, how we interplay with the systems, how um, you know, we, we uh, work together with each other so that uh, we're in tip top shape, the jet's in tip top shape. And we all as, as, you know, in, in, uh, as airline pilots and the companies themselves, that safety is always first, no matter what. So yeah, we, uh, so yeah, we study. <laughs> yeah, so absolutely. We're ready. Uh huh. Yeah, and try to put it into practice as best we can. And and uh, I I had an early event yesterday morning, uh, and it's just important to reemphasize, uh, like you said, the integration between the operation center, which all airlines have uh, at their headquarters, uh, the airplane that's flying, the flight attendants, the passengers, uh, the base station. Uh, air traffic control all have to be integrated in the event, the very, very unlikely event uh, that there could be uh, a, a mechanical issue with the aircraft. All of that has to be co coordinated in a, an effective, dependable manner uh, so that we can care for uh, our passengers. That's Absolutely. the number one thing. Absolutely. Most important thing. And of course we love to fly. So, you know, we love taking everybody to where they want to be. And you know, we were hoping to see you very soon on your trips. Uh, <laughs> so we can't wait to fly you. Is there anything else, Scott, that you'd like to add before we wrap things up? No, I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak with you today. Uh, and as you and I have been talking, I realized that well, yeah, we do have a tremendous amount of information uh, because we travel <laughs> like pros. 
uh, and, and where flying like you and I is just a daily occurrence. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people that it's uncomfortable and hopefully this will put your listeners at ease uh, and we can get them to go see family members uh, and take them wherever they want to go worldwide. Thank you. Yeah, that's the thank you for joining us. It's been such an honor to have you with us. And, you know, if you want to reach out directly to Scott, book him for uh, his guest speaking. Again, it's Scott Cartvet. So it's K A R T V E D T dot com. So you can reach Scott there. And again, go to captainlaura.com and slash checklist to download your free checklist um, uh, for for you and let us know what you think if these are things that you want to see more of that you feel this has been valuable to you to help you out we plan to do um, some more uh, uh, video interviews for you and keep sharing information but we want to hear from you if, if you're interested in learning more about traveling like a pro and uh, having a downloadable your very own uh, accessible downloadable module series digital module series let us know that so we hope you've enjoyed everything it's been such a such a great blessing to have scott with us and share all of his knowledge and we hope to see you again on the rest of the uh adventures that we're following along please share it with everyone and we're wishing you blue skies and smooth rides thank you